in electronics you can uh, stumble uh, even on the very very simple circuits like the LM386 it's a uh, very small audio amplifier that's often used in many circuits you can find it everywhere on the World Wide Web uh, in applications like small audio amplifiers radios etc etc so my idea was well let me use this uh, chip and I had not expected any problem any problems but I found many problems especially oscillation, instability, etc, etc. And I made a video about that approximately one or two hours ago, today. Well, uh, this is the schematic of that old video. I don't want to show it too long because uh, it did, did not work properly. Oscillations, very, very strange. Uh, audio amplification to fears, uh, strange oscillations on the background, etc. So, this is the better circuit that I found out and tested today, and I want to demonstrate it. In fact, it is the uh, same circuit that I published earlier, though it uh, the L. M386 is now not set to 200 times amplification but to 20 times amplification and the pre amplification is given by this extremely simple audio pre amplifier that is by the way this one that is by the way usable for all kinds of purposes. Also as a microphone amplifier uh, you can use uh, say an electric capsule at the input here and then of course give that electric capsule a certain voltage that's normal etc. More on my YouTube channel. Here are the pin connections of the LM386, here the pin connections of the used pre-amplifier transistor. And well, uh, perhaps you think, why do you use here a 10 nanofarad capacitor? And why do you shortcut the input of the amplifier with a 100 nanofarad capacitor? That must give, in theory, at least an enormous damping, thus that the uh, highest frequencies are not amplified. Well, that's right in a certain way, but I will demonstrate that with my oscilloscope, how it works. And furthermore, <coughs> another question. You have that, say, a filter unit against oscillations etc. And why do you use here for instance an extra 100 nanofarad capacitor from pin 6 directly to the minus? That's the ground. Well, uh, the only thing that I can say is that that worked best. So with this uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor uh, I could take away oscillations of that uh, LM386 chip. Had not expected that at all, but anyway, oscillations were gone when I looked on the oscilloscope. And this also had an effect on the not oscillation of the circuit and could be to do have to do with, say, limiting the frequency input range of a amplifier. When you uh, say limited frequency range to a certain, uh, say to approximately 16 kilohertz or so, with the help of a capacitor, 
uh, the bandwidth of such a amplifier uh, drops down very very substantially the audio bandwidth that's what I mean that means that oscillations can uh, occur though uh, not very often that's say classical way of uh, protecting an audio amplifier for uh, parasitic oscillations though that capacitor here is extremely high normally it is approximately 470 picofarad or 1 nanofarad that is 1000 picofarad anyway so let's look and listen this is the circuit on the breadboard I used uh, I've used this speaker 200 milliwatt 8 ohms approximately I first used this speaker but there were very strange resonances in this speaker so I, I have uh, glued it with contact glue rubber cement perhaps it's usable in the, f in the future uh, in fact it's not usable any longer but perhaps for audio etc so let's listen and look have to switch on the mp3 player Of course that was not fair, when you overdrive a amplifier you will always see that sine waves change into square waves, so let me do that now. And of course a lot of distortion. But uh, the good thing is that there is no parasitic oscillation and it works very, very nice. Bring down the input volume somewhat. Now it's on say a medium input level. Lift up the so that was it. Uh, well, that was more or less all to tell and to demonstrate uh, I've used this speaker it is given the very very, sim very simple setup quite big but anyway when you use a good quality loudspeaker box you uh, will be surprised about the, how good such a simple amplifier can sound but I want to use this for a very small project in the future. So the first idea was to develop a very simple audio amplifier that could be as small as possible. And uh, it gave problems. I had not expected that at all, but finally this is the circuit that works and that I am going to use. Thanks for watching. Uh, the chip works on voltages between 9 and 12 volts. Officially it works on 6 volts. But uh, well, 
also this part of the circuit, the preamp can also work on 6 volts. It's a standard circuit uh, anyway. So, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. Perhaps it's interesting and I'm going to work further on this project. The first stage is now okay.